You're listening to The J with your host, Kennedy. What's up, everyone? You are listening to the J, the Tetsudo OK podcast. I believe it's episode 16. And um, on some unfortunate news today, there was another Norfolk Southern train derailment, uh, this time in Springfield, Illinois. And I, I saw some videos. So let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick here. And as you can see, cars are not allowed past those barriers behind me. We're still waiting for a press conference for more information about this incident. But what we do know is about 20 cars derailed off of a 212 okay. train, which was traveling that is south through Springfield. According to Norfolk Southern, no one was hurt and no hazardous materials were involved. I've seen several emergency crews here to help with the cleanup, including Springfield police and fire departments. Alerts have been sent out to people living So let's let's, let's go back. Let's 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 go check out the the point of derailment. We are waiting to Let's go right here. I want to pause it. Looks like that uh, Norfolk Southern track right here. I I'm, I want to see before if it if it already it doesn't get to that point, but, what but we do know is about looks like there was a, like a little bump right here. Because if the, if you notice that both cabs they they go up and down, everything's all level. We do know is about twenty cars. Oh man, something happens at this midpoint right here. Of course, we don't know what happens up front. We don't know if the, there was a because if you see the footage of the derailment, it looks like it was scattered at all of a certain point. So it could have been in the front, and this probably caused a uh, like a, like a chain reaction, and then this made this thing bump. But yeah, this is really really not good. But um, because I think uh, that's another I don't know how many derailments they've had already. Um, off of a 212 train it's unfortunate which was traveling south through Springfield According at least there's no injuries Southern, but no one was hurt and no hazardous materials this gives involved. another black eye to uh, crews here to help with the cleanup including Springfield police and fire departments alerts have been sent out to people living nearby to stay inside as a precaution and some people are also there. experiencing power outages we are waiting to see how long those precautions well now let's let's move on to little you know positive and brighter things here. Well, let's talk about Tetsuko no Tabi, which means Tetsuko's Travels. And it's based on uh, this anime series. I was perusing through YouTube and I was like, wait a minute, I don't think I've watched this. And I figured, you know what? It's based on a manga series by Yokomi Hirohiko, which was illustrated by Kikuchi Naoe. And it was featured in Shogaku Khan's monthly Iki between 2001 and 2006. And a 13 episode anime series was created by Group Talk, T A C. And um, the series is inspired by a book, Getting On and Off JR's 4600 Stations by Yukomi Hirohiko, published in 1998, which chronicles his experience visiting all of Japan's rail train stations and I can tell you right now is that once you start um, researching it <laughs> uh, especially Yokomi Hirohiko he's like he's famous among railway fans he goes to places and they just want his autograph it's just really interesting and we'll look at a, a little few things from the uh, from the actual person but um, the editor-in-chief of Shogaku Khan's Monthly Iki, Igami Hideki, wanted to recapture Yukomi's experience in manga. And so uh, the editor of Shogaku Khan, Ishikawa Masahiko, he's a real fan, and he recruited uh, Kikuchi Naoe, a new manga artist who worked with Shogaku Khan on a number of shorts, and this would be her first serialized work. And so Tetsuko Notabi is about Kikuchi, 
traveling with Yokomi and Ishikawa, illustrating a manga based on their experiences. Granted, I don't think it's as crazy as what we see in this uh, manga series, but um, Kikuchi Naoi, uh, she's just a budding manga artist, and she has no interest in trains whatsoever. And when she joins the editor and also uh, Yokomi, who is like a hardcore train fan, the man is just so passionate about trains and she can't understand why he's so crazy about trains and even the stations way out in the middle of nowhere where there's probably no people involved uh, or anywhere around. And she's, she's sometimes put off by it, but at the same time, because of these travels, her knowledge of railway tends to grow. But yeah, it's a very interesting series, and while the Yokomi Hirohiko um, that is featured on the anime series is very uh, energetic and happy and just, just has a lot of passion, I, the actual person, Yokomi, is actually very reserved and stoic and quiet, so but he's passionate about railway though, but um, one thing I love about this series is the amount of detail they put into the trains. Uh, this was fan sub, but um, what is he here? One thing that I notice is that it's just the. And see, this is one of the things is that you notice uh, with this anime series is that the amount of details they put on the trains, it's really awesome. And if you have ridden on a lot of these trains, you just can't, you just can't help but being, you know, happy of what you see. But it's a very fun series. Um, again, it's something that you probably wouldn't see a physical release in the U.S., but... It is up on YouTube, uh, fan subtitled, and um, it's again, it's 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 a, it's a uh, fun series. Uh, you don't really come across series that spotlight on on the uh, Japanese trail uh, train system all that much, uh, but when you do, um, yeah, this is one of the uh, better ones. Uh, there's a total of about uh, seven manga, I believe, available. And then it has spun off um, uh, sequels. I think the the next one was called Shin Tetsuko no Tabi, which had five volumes. And then after that one was from uh, 2009 to 2013. The next one is called Tetsuko no Tabi San Daime. Um, this one was only four volumes from 2016 to 2019. But again... Give this uh, anime a try. It's on YouTube. Again, it's fan subtitled, but um, it's fairly satisfying. Very satisfying to watch. And as I mentioned, uh, the real Yokomi Hirohiko. Uh, someone posted the actual documentary on YouTube. And you can see the real Yokomi that the, that the manga and anime series is based on. Here he is right there. This guy has ridden on every... I think he's visited every train station in Japan. <laughs> but this is a special based on the, the anime series. I considered pick, uh, wanting to pick up the, the actual manga. Um, yeah, the anime series was released in 2007. We're just going to see a little bit of this. Um, Oh, 
You can see him uh, doing his job, taking pictures, and as you can see, he's not as wild and crazy as the uh, the one depicted on the anime series, but JTB. But the character looks very similar to the uh, to the real person. So the, let me go ahead and forward uh, to this, I think, uh... <laughs> Always with his tripod camera. That's pretty cool. If you're passionate for it, go for it. Uh, this is a uh, the goodbye for a certain train, and he was there. And I think you could see him uh, signing autographs from a lot of from other railway fans. Okay, so let's check out this video. I am guessing. Um, from the looks of it that we may see another video of unrightly um tetsudo fans um how can i say this in japan there has been issues with uh railway photographers uh some because of the the crowding the struggles and this is not just uh, limited to railway. Um, I've been, you know, as a photographer myself, I've been to Japan. Um, for me, I cover a lot of events. I've shot many, many uh, celebrity events. I took a lot of photos of celebrities in Japan. And I know that and in my experience, for me, I'm, you know, I want to be the top dog. I want that center position on stage for a concert i want to be the in the front um you know i'm very big on position and when it comes to large scale events where there's going to be a lot of photographers it's actually one of the most frustrating situations you could be in um <laughs> you know you'll encounter some of the rudest people. This is weird because in most of the time when you're in Japan, you mostly come across a lot of, you know, good people. But when it comes to photography, it's very competitive. And there are times where I have my situation, not my situation, my um, area, my location all set. I have... I just had to, you know, grab the models, let them know, okay, everything's all set, ready to go. And next thing you know, I see a photographer who knows I had that position, just take it immediately. Or, you know, a lot of crowding, a lot of crowding, such as what you see here. Uh, fortunately, um, you know, I've been very fortunate that uh, a lot of labels, a lot of entertainment companies will, t you know, will tell me, you know what? We don't want you <laughs> right behind. We want you towards the front. And a lot of people who are familiar with my work, uh, they they know that uh, that uh, um, well, they know they know the work I do. And so I've been fortunate that they um, the event owners give me the you know front position. So 
in this case, it's a railway. It's not an entertainment company. It's not a venue. It's a train station. And it's first come, first serve. A lot of people want to get their photos. And so I'm guessing we're going to see something bad. <laughs> I'm th uh, I hopefully no one gets in fights. You, you don't see that in Japan, but... I can see a lot of shoving because this happens at cosplay photography for anime or cosplay events. It, it gets pretty bad. So let's see how it is for these people who came to see the train at the Kanaz Kanazawa Bunko Station on the Keihin Kyuko main line in Yokohama City. People are yelling, stop, stop pushing forward. One guy's trying to use a stepladder on a tripod, but the wind is so strong. <laughs> So what's happening on this day, the KQ's new 1000 type train, Yellow Happy Train, was undergoing a trial run. And railway fans posted photos taken in different places one after the other. <laughs> and now they're all running to go to the next location where they can get photos. Oh man. Crazy situation. Okay, so uh, for me, I do take photos of trains, but it's more like everyone else who's waiting at the train station. I have never been to a um, grand opening. I have been to a few closings, but not on the final day. Just more of you have you have a few more months left to say goodbye to this train or something like that. I've done that before, but nothing where it brings in crowds of photographers like this. Again, this happens also with cosplay photography. Um, it gets kind of crazy. And um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting. So according to a spokesperson for Keihin Electric Railway, they tried to talk to railway fans after the train departed. Um, he said he wanted to talk to them, but they all ran away. So he, they couldn't listen to what he had to say. He came before just, you know, he came just before the shoot and moved quickly. Well, they came just before the shoot and then they moved quickly. And, um, yeah, that's uh, unfortunate. Um, so there are, here are some of the comments from people who saw this video. Why is this happening? Please ban photography in the station premises. Don't block the flow of narrow platforms. Shouldn't the staff who took the video of the scene and send it somewhere without feeling you can't grow up like this? Of course, without. OK, so in other words, uh, you know, trying to show a lesson by putting mosaics on the, the faces of the people and just saying, do not be like this. Don't don't become a person like this. Um, but people said, you know what, they should actually start charging a fee uh, to take part in these or uh, prohibit shooting from the station. Um, let's see here. They should maybe they should charge an admission ticket, a thousand yen or ten thousand yen per hour. I do know for cosplay events such as um well geez, I've been to a few, but I I know that uh they do charge a fee for photographers and I paid it and you know that's you know, that's how it is usually. For trains they don't have that. Maybe they should railway companies probably could make some money so but um yeah i think these are some some situations where it gives people the whole hobby of people who are railway photographers somewhat of a bad name um but again this is not everyone um you can't judge what we see here it's unfortunate has this happened before? Oh, definitely. But the thing is, is that um, there are ways to prevent it. And 
It's up to the railway companies to enforce that. Uh, you would hope that people, you know, know better. But at the same time, as I meant, as I mentioned, it's it's a competitive uh, situation when it comes to photography for um, for uh, cosplay events, railway events. Yeah, it does. It gets very competitive and everyone wants the best shot. Everyone wants to be the first person person to post it on social media. It's just how it is. And um, but it looks like it's getting a little radical, a little, little crazy. So, um, yeah, it's uh, something to keep an eye out on uh, in the near future, because I think the more news news footage these things tend to get it doesn't doesn't go too well there's going to be some there's going to be some type of uh i don't want to use the word backlash but some type of rules that should be set in place and we'll see okay let's take a look at this one here this one is the Hakone Tozen Railway will be hosting a hands-on event. Let's make a mountain train with a mountain train. Uh, for those not familiar with the uh, railway, um, it's popular for its St. Moritz uh, trains. And this one, they're going to have a event on March 25th during spring break for people who want to learn how to build a train. Um, the vehicle, let's see here. I'm not sure... Oh, yes, yes. It says here that anyone who wants to experience gets to, to uh, build the model and take it home. You can also experience riding in a driver's cab, which is usually not possible. Taking pictures with the destination display change and stamping the uh, um, date, you know, stamping, ticket stamping will also be there. Um, wow, they're really, th that is pretty cool. And they're going to be presenting three items, including the station name, key holder, whether the event limited design, Hakone Tozen Railway Station staff are responsible for everything from planning to operation. Nomura Maki of Hakone Yumoto Station says, This event was planned so that parents and children could create fun memories of spring bake together while interacting with station, st station staff and drivers of the Hakone, Hakone Tozen Railway. Since it is the first event, it was a success. I hope that everyone, since it's the first event, it will, we, you know, it will be a success. I hope that everyone will participate. Uh, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to bring a lot of people. I think that's just fantastic to tell you the truth. So they're going to have um, four event times. It'll start at 10 a.m., then 11.45 a.m., 1.30 p.m., and 3.15 p.m., they could only have 17 groups with a maximum of 34 people each time. 68 groups in total, so maximum of 136 people. So, it is necessary to obtain one electronic reservation ticket for each group. And it, in principle, up to two people per group. Children under the age of three are included in the number of participants only if they occupy a seat in the vehicle. Due to the target age of the model to be handled, if you are under 15 years old, you must be accompanied by a guardian over 15 years old. Anyone over the age of 15 can par can participate alone. Wow. So participation reservations will be accepted at the Hakone Tozan Train online store from 10 o'clock a.m. beginning on March 4th. Okay, so I'm at the Hakone uh, Tozen uh, Hakone Tozen Train online store, and uh, I went ahead and put the English here so you could all see it. But um, you could see here, this is a play rail, Moha 2 type. They got a few things here, commemorative of tickets. Ah, man, I don't know if they sell this. That'd be, you know, it'd be great if a lot of these places can sell outside of the U.S., That'd be wonderful. Um, this one, this is where people can. There we go. People can get an electronic ticket. It's free, but you can reserve, go for a time, and hopefully you are successful in getting, getting um, a ticket because it's limited to the amount of seatings. But I'm just looking at the other stuff here that they have. 
good number of stuff here. We got the shorties. Wait a minute. Now that I think about it. I think that was the shorty that they're offering. Not a Kato or a Tomix or anything like that. It is the B-Train shorty. Yeah. That's what I think. And it is the 2008 Moritz. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Hey, everyone. So, for this next portion, let's do a few reviews here. I'm going to talk about the Tomix 7152, the JR Electric Locomotive Type EF81. This particular version is a Nagaoka Rose with visor. And, you know, as you know, I love my freight trains and I do enjoy the EF8, EF81s. They're pretty much like uh, a major workhorse that uh, have been continually used by JR Freight. And uh, surprisingly, it was created, uh, well, not surprisingly, but it, it, it was created back in the, the 60s. I think, was it 1968 or 1969, I think, uh, when it was uh, developed by Japan National Railways? 1968, okay. And it's one of the few trains that uh, that were continuously manufactured after JNR was uh, divided and privatized. And I know that uh, JR East took like 78 cars, JR West took 16, JR Kyushu took 6, and JR Freight took 56 cars. The train was manufactured so it can run between 50 uh, hertz and 60 hertz on AC electrified sections and DC electrified sections on the Japan Sea Jukon line. And um, yeah, this is I, I wanted this train mainly because I know it's a workhorse. Um, it can get confused, though, because uh, there are other red trains. There's the EF-81, the EF-80, the EF-70, the EF-61s, um, you name it. There, there's a few of them. But uh, one thing that you can uh, count on with the EF-81 is that it's one. it was one that could run in the west and the north. And, um, I mean, it's a really durable, durable train. And it's one of the reasons why I chose it to be among my train fleet, my freight train fleet that I have in my collection. Um, but this is a Tomix release, and I know there are Kato releases. Um, and when it comes to the EF81, there are many, many, many variations. Um, one thing to take a look at, and I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show you. This is a newer one. Well, this one's probably 2021. The others are 2020, 2018 or so. And one of the things that you want to look for is the top area here. Um, right here. So this one is black. The Nagaoka one has a black um, rooftop and the silver right here. Uh, these are in silver. A lot of the other EF81s, they're all gray. So that's one thing to look at. Another thing to look at is the the windows here. These are black. I know the Kyushu ones, you might find a few that are not black. Uh, another different version, uh, no, 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 not different version, but another, uh, another thing that the E81 uh, Nagaoka version comes is two front markers. And uh, they do come with different number uh, nameplates. I know that. Let's see here. Okay, so this one, which was released in August 2021, this comes with the EF81, but with the number license plates of 139, 141, 143, and 151. You get about uh, 16 of them to go on all four sides. But you got to be careful because they're super tiny, and the chances of putting them up upside down are are uh, are easy. So you just want to make sure you're doing it right. Have a lot of lighting; that's important. Um, unlike the Kato ones, these do not snap on and just stay. I noticed that it kept on coming off. Unfortunately, I was able to find some of them. I think I lost one, unfortunately, and. Um, yeah, it can get a little maddening. I think um, I think one thing you need to look at is just the nameplates and this little bottom here. 
this little square uh, with uh, it. Those two are not the easiest. And again, when you're putting it on, you can't tell which is upside down or so. Uh, one of the reasons why I was able to do it okay was that I had my macro lens. I would take a picture and then enlarge it. And I'm like, okay, I think I got it right. Um, the front markers right here, you get the uh, Hokuriku and the Dewa. This is one thing that I, I I hope Tomix considers this. Kato makes theirs their front markers that are magnetic, so they stick on. Tomix does not. You kind of have to pretty much put some adhesive model cement, just a little tiny dab or glue, and then it's in there. But um, yeah, I chose not to put the nameplate here because again. Um, they were small and I lost, I think I lost one and I, I don't want, I didn't want one side having it and the other one didn't. So I just put the marker, the front marker right here. Um, but yeah, I really do like ACDC uh, looking uh, rooftops uh, for trains. So the EF81s, they pretty much go for like about 50 bucks US or like 77 or around over, over 6,600 yen. Um, so they're 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 affordable, but if you are if you just want a red workhorse of a train, uh, the Kato EF80 is among the cheapest you could find. I think it's like about forty bucks. So it's something to consider. I think if anything, um, having a fleet of these uh, these tough these tough trains, these workhorses are great. Um, the EF81, the EF65s. Um, the of 80s, heck, even the DE, um, the DE ones that are, uh, I think they're like little orange and gray, but uh, the 10s and 11s are really good to have in your collection. Um, the detail also that you find underneath on these trains, they may look plain, but they're very cool. Oh, the Nagaoka one is um, another difference is the, uh, the color. This one is like a muted um red as you can see right here that has a little pinkish that's why they say rose color uh the other ones you might find are red red um looks a little more more polished so uh you know it's up to you it's up it's, it's your choice of what what you know what you prefer um but uh let's see here do i have okay here's here's actual an actual ef81 right here so, you can see, oh, okay, there's one thing I want to point out. See these handrails right here? Okay. The handrails are not installed. You get these two dots. Also, the uh, the flame tubes are not installed. So, here's the thing. With Kato, ones I've had, I don't have an EF81 uh, for Kato, but uh, other freight trains, they, they already have them installed. Tomix does not do that, and one of the things that's going to make you go crazy is that um, the the uh, handrails are so tiny, and it's really hard. Even with your tweezers, chances of dropping them, and I'm like, oh my gosh, the chances of losing them are great. So the same thing with the flame tube, the whistle and flame tubes, that you, you could just lose those easily. Um, but if I, all I can say is that if you're going to put them on, just make sure you have some modeling cement because uh, it's not just going to snap there. You're just going to have to make sure you place it carefully and then remove the blemishes uh, from the adhesive after. But uh, let's see here. Another thing I don't like is this right here. Um, uh, I've been critical of Tomix's uh, center or middle bogey. Um, these work great on Tomix tracks. If you try to use it on a Kato, chances of the derailing is probably a little high. Um, I've always had these issues with uh, with uh, Tomix's uh, middle bogey versus the a Kato one. But you do get the flywheel, which adds a little bit more weight to your train. You do get the Arnold Rapido couplers. Um, in addition, you also get a uh, dummy coupler and TN coupler included. So that is the EF81s, definitely worth checking out. 
Uh, the other one now, and this is probably my one of my favorites, is the, uh, let me bring it up here. So this is the Kato M250 Series Super Rail Cargo U5080 Container Loaded Basic Set. Uh, the 1721s, 10-1721s. And um, this one I got purely what grabbed my attention is the aesthetics. But it's the M250 series. And uh, when I saw that Kato made it, I had to pick it up. It's just It just looks so darn cool. Um, the M250 is a freight electric multiple unit EMU train operated by Japan, Japan Freight Railways, JR Freight. And it began in 2004, and the goal of this type of train was to reduce emissions and carry general freight for small package forwarders. So, like places like Amazon or so forth. Yeah, these uh, these guys handle a lot of those special delivery services uh, for packaging. And the container train was also the first for JR Freight with distributed traction, and it was manufactured by Nippon Shario, Kawasaki Heavy Industries, and Toshiba. Uh, let me show you some pictures of this, uh, of the actual train. There we go, right there. It's really unique in look. Let's see, another one here. There you go. But yeah, um, back in the early 2000s, JR Freight realized that while they were carrying 2.8 million tons of freight, the trains were not competitive for transporting small amounts of good goods over medium distances. So that's why they developed this one. You know, they shifted. They wanted to shift from freight transport uh, from road to rail. So they were considering specializing in small lot freight transportation. And the 250 series was born from that. The M250 series is a 16 car train consisting of four different types of vehicles the m stands for multiple unit the two stands for direct current lines and the 50 is for the maximum speed which is 100 kilometers an hour which is 68 miles per hour now the other thing you'll notice is the name sagawa sagawa express um, this is a major transportation company based in manamiku kyoto and it competes with the Yamato Transport, Nippon Express, and other logistic companies. Uh, founded by Sagawa Kiyoshi back in 1957, it was registered as a company in 1965. Most of its customers are Amazon, SoftBank, Yamada Denki, Culture Convenience Club, Sony Style, Asuku, Digital Media Mart, and more. And um, Asuku, I mean... Um, they have a business. They also have a business alliance with the Hitachi Transport System. But yeah, um, these guys are. Uh, you know, you, you when you see this train, it's just so unique and looking. And I like the light blue, the blue with the silver Sagawa. Oh, the, speaking of that, the containers. These containers are freaking awesome. I. Uh, they use a U54A container, and this is the fir the first time the U50A um, did I say 54? The U50A containers are the first time that Kato is being offered that Kato offered these for this uh, for anything really. Um, the U50A uh, containers are shorter than the conventional U54A containers, and um, yeah, they look so cool. I, I mean, I just love the detail. I love the silver and blue. And again, going with the light blue and blue, uh, darker blue colors, it really stands out. Uh, you do get a panograph right here. Um, the Sagawa logo is uh, right there on the front, as you can see. Um, they The train also has... Uh, uh, front LEDs and rear LEDs, which is a plus. Um, as is for underneath, let's see if I can get that. Did I take a picture of it? Yes, I did. So far, I have not had any problems. Um, I mean, it's been running well on mine, uh, my track. But the only thing I don't like is it uses a special type of uh, um, coupler. And... Um, well, no, it's actually a good thing. Uh, it's it's better than 
the Rapido couplers, the Arnold, but sometimes uh, um, getting it connected, I have to do everything manually. You can't just, you know, bump into the car or, or roll it in there and connect. Sometimes you kind of have to um, fix it. I mean, there's there's times that I noticed on my Kato and Tomix tracks, I did find some situations of stalling with the motor car or turns in certain areas. But I have been able to run all f um, all four, uh, you know, uh, cars on a single track viaduct. I feel that things run much smoother in a in the double track setup. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, the couplers that they have right now is a closed connection, uh, PAT, I believe it's called. And um, yeah, this is actually a very cool set. But the thing is, I just want to caution people that um, this uh, this train set right here, you know, I got it um, when it was released. Um, when it was released in Japan, it was about twelve four hundred twelve thousand four hundred seventy four yen, which is to us like ninety one dollars and fifty cents. So. A lot of people are selling it for over 175 over 200 I wouldn't spend that much. I mean, if you could find it cheaper than that, go for it. But it's definitely one of the most awesome freight trains I have in my setup, my collection. I highly, 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 highly recommend it. So let's see here. I think I talked about a lot of these other trains here, but... Um, well, there's a few trams. I'll, I'll hold that off later. But yeah, I highly recommend this uh, this this freight train. Uh, both this and the F81s. This one's, of course, uh, the M250 is a little bit more modern, more cool, you know. But if you want one of those uh, um, small package uh, freight trains, this is definitely one to get. Oh, there are differences. Um, I forget, not differences, but there are some sets available. Okay, set A comes with um, a total of six containers. Those six Sagawa uh, 50A containers. Um, it comes with two 260 wagons, but you get the 251 cars with the blue, uh, while set B offers eight 260 series wagons and 16 containers. Uh, so if you're looking for the containers, that's the way to go. Um, now, I think there was also another set. Um, I think it just came with the, uh, I think it was, I don't want to call it set C, but it was just an add-on set. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a very cool set. I, I mean, I definitely recommend it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Um, it's probably one of the highlights that I, 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 I've never been so excited getting this one. Uh, and uh, I just like the overall design. Definitely worth it. Definitely, uh, <laughs> I can't emphasize how awesome this is if you can find, it, if you can find one. So it's 10-1721. Okay, let's talk about my diorama structure. Oh, you can see the leaning um, <laughs> uh, power poles here, but... Um, again, I'm just doing as a test right now. As mentioned, the tracks have LED strip lights that are uh, powered by three AA batteries. Got two running, so six to um, six AA's total. Um, right now, I'm using for the buildings. I started installing the um, Evan Designs lights. Let me bring them up. Let's see if I can bring it here. Come on. Here we go. Okay. So, Evan Designs are based in the United States. They have different types of lights that you can get. Um, these are the light kits. All you need is pretty much to hook up is just the black wire goes into the green. Red wire goes to red. You get these little red, you know, the rubber... Um, covers and um yeah you just put the the two cr2032 battery in and it's ready to go 
you can choose from the size of LEDs. You can go for the chip. You could get nano. You could get pico. Um, and then the number of LEDs you could choose from one, two, three, or four. It's not that bad at five dollars. And you could choose from warm white or cool white. Um, wire length for eight inch or fourteen inch. Um, now, would I do it? differently again um well let me go to a night shot here let's see here okay so this is the warm light colors um and here in the tracks i use a you know um normal white it was just running or what okay the thing is, is uh, right now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to hide wires. I don't know if I want to drill a hole in the bottom. I know a lot of people do that um, because the wires are not super long. And um, some people might, uh, you, you know, find they, they know how to do all this stuff. They know how to wire and you know, just increase the wire size. I'm not the most uh, <laughs> most savvy when it comes to that, especially for this track already with so much on it that to do the wiring and stuff. I, I think, yeah, it would be great just to, you know, if you had your, that's where having your own table, making your own is a plus because if you want to drill a hole or so, you can. Um, right now I have mine on, uh, I have several layers from foam to cork board. And then the actual wood of a of a of of the a desk that I use. Um, in the beginning, when I first created everything, I didn't really envision uh, putting a lot of LED lights. But I think after seeing so many others doing it, it um, really made me consider it. So, um, yeah. I think if anything, um, I gotta, I gotta give a shout out to um, Evan uh, Designs for these LED lights. Again, they're inexpensive. Uh, what I did to get the lights in there is that every structure that you get from Tomix or Kato uh, will have a hole um, underneath. Uh, the Tomix structures, fortunately, for the bigger ones like the Shin um, Yamanoto building, it comes in layers, so. You can put one light in, you could thread it in, and, you know, you, you have, you could, you know, pretty much tape it or glue it to a layer. It's not that difficult. Um, but some are just like open containers. Uh, the Kato ones, you really can't, you can't really pick your position because when you thread it in there, you don't really get to see where you're, because you're coming, you're putting it through the bottom. Granted, you can probably drill a hole and onto your structure and then put the LD lights that way. That is that is one alternative. But um, yeah, I think uh, the atomic structures are a little bit easier. Um, I do have several lighting, um, more lighting LEDs, so I might do that on the little smaller buildings here. I did it get it I did put it on the convenience stores which was cool. But um one thing I noticed that the more I it's supposed to last for 9 hours straight and um the CR2032 batteries the more lights you have the more they can uh, I think they are they can die off but I you know I tend to have a lot of CR2032 batteries anyway so it's 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 okay. You can get them cheap also on eBay eBay on, and Amazon fairly cheap but yeah um, I uh, pretty much threaded it from the bottom you can see the wires right here I know well, the wires that actually it's I actually connected the the um, the family mart and the uh, the comics manga building together so there's a wire it's not inside it's actually on the the you know hanging from the top so i need to figure out a way to hide those wires uh the other ones have um right here oh uh, actually you can't see it here let me see here if i can uh make it smaller here 
here we go yeah you can see it a little bit right here there was some lighting right here that I put in there um, but yeah um, right now I just have to say that I uh, gotta give a, a shout out to Evan Design these lighting kits are pretty cool um, now I wonder if um, I will do the the other LED lighting which let me bring it up here real quick okay so when it comes to billboards um, as you know Japan has quite a video based billboards they also have you know a lot of static billboards um, but there are some areas where you do see some some with you know lighting and uh, especially you can see in my di diorama videos that I posted you can check those out but for those who have train sets and are looking for uh, LED lighting you could you know definitely check out Miller Miller engineering um, the websites m i c r o s t r u dot com micro s t r u dot com and uh, they offer quite a bit of the Miller Engineering uh, billboards so um, you could see the Z scale stuff but they do have an N and Z scale you can see like the little copper tone the Parker Rexall again these are mostly American based but still um, you know they're very cool if you want to add that this one looks cool right here the Wellway Express Agency you got the Zenith Color TV you got the Ballantine Kodak oh man I just wish they they had things and from like Japanese companies that would be cool that's something I definitely would like you got Snapple you got IGA Barbershop Sherwin Williams Breyers ice cream Motel no vacancy St. Clair gasoline that's very cool Pizza Hut I just wish there was a uh, Japanese equivalent of this. Okay, so I was curious myself to see if Japan has uh, their own LED lighting in terms of not just the you know stuff that says Kano OK or stuff like that, but I'm talking about like the big ones sim similar to what New York has and and. Uh, and what we just saw from like Miller Designs to see if there's something that Japan has. So let's, this is a naked book girl. We could see one right there in the bottom. Karaoke. A lot of them tend to have the karaoke ones that I see all over Japan. The rest are more like uh, lighting towards uh, advertisements, st still uh, advertising. This is the Marui building right there, which is available by Kato. They call it the Park Avenue building. But let's just pause right here. You can see big camera, but that's just the, the logo. Okay, it's almost an hour now, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it. But before I do, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you a video when I went to the NHK Broadcast Museum. And I saw a little diorama in there. Let's check it out right here. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's actually a pretty cool place to, to check out. But yeah. That's the diorama from the Broadcast Museum for NHK. Anyway, everyone, you have a good week. And I'll talk to you later. Or I'll see you later. Ciao, matane. I think it's the vanilla truck. Yeah.